Hey everyone, how's it going? So before we can create complex applications, it's important to know the basics of Node.js. So that's what we're going to cover in these next few videos, is the basics. So we're going to learn how to create uh, servers and understanding requests and response headers and things like that. So um, if you've never done Node.js before, this would be perfect for you. But also if you have done Node.js, this might be a good refresher for you. So let's get started. Um, last time we created this basic uh, myapp.js file. Um, but we'll get rid of the code in here and we'll write some new code. So we'll start by creating a server and uh, in order to do that we need to import one of the uh, Node.js core modules. So modules in, in Node.js are just um, essentially other JavaScript files you can say you want your project to use. Now there's tons of functionality that comes with Node.js of course, um, but they don't make it all available to you right from the start because that would mean your project has a lot of files you probably don't want to be using um, and that increases dependencies and things like that. So what happens is if you want to use these core modules you have to reference them. So uh, the JavaScript code that's there for us that allows us to create servers, if we want to use that we have to tell Node.js uh, that we want to use that and it will include it in the project. So just real quick, there are a bunch of core modules uh, and uh, here are some of them, HTTP, URL, query string, um, you can see this FS one, we used the FS one in the previous lecture. So the core modules basically all have their own purposes. So for example, the FS one we used before allows us to work with files, uh, input and output. So that's why we we're able to write to that file last time. Um, but we want to use the HTTP core module, which allows us to create servers. You can see right here, um, create Node.js servers. So later on the course when we start working with URLs and things like that and paths we'll be referencing these modules but we'll get to that uh, later. So um, the first thing we need to do is tell Node.js that we want to use this uh, HTTP server. We can do that by saying var HTTP equals require and then we'll just put HTTP in there. Okay, and this tells Node.js we want to use the HTTP module. Now underneath that, we're going to actually use that. We're going to say var server equals HTTP. So we're going to use this object we referenced above and then say dot. And you see we have a bunch of these uh, functions on it. If you're using the VS Code app like I am right here, you'll see we get these uh, suggestions. Now the method we want to use is the create server uh, method like that. Okay, and this like the name suggests creates a server. Now this function takes one parameter. Um, you can see right here if I hover over it, you see it's a request listener and that's basically the code that you want to execute every time someone joins this server. So we can do that by using an arrow function in here like this. So take a look at that syntax real quick. Um, we've created an arrow function which is just an anonymous function an anonymous function is just a function which doesn't have a name. Uh, a regular function might be something like function some name like this. That's a regular function. An anonymous function is one which doesn't have a name or any a function declaration um, like this. Okay, and it's basically uh, a function which is created there and then. So we're using this new uh, JavaScript arrow function right here, but it's exactly the same as if we did it like this. So uh, if we create a function like this it'd be exactly the same, okay? Just arrow functions are a new way to go. So you can use this if you want to, but we're gonna use the new uh, JavaScript arrow functions, which is uh, which are declared like this. So just pause the video if you need to and make sure you've copied this exactly like this. But this anonymous function, which is inside, takes two parameters. It takes a request parameter and it takes a response parameter. So the request parameter is just the object uh, that contains information about this request. And the response parameter is just an object which allows us to uh, send responses. But you'll see how that works a little bit later on. So don't worry about understanding these for now. Uh, that will become a lot clearer later on. So inside there, uh, we're just going to write a console.log. And we'll just say joined like that. Okay. And you'll see how this works in just a second. But the last thing we need to do is just say uh, server.listen like this. And this will actually create the server for us. And we need to put a port number in there, and you can use any port number you want, but a good uh, route to go down is to use some uh, thousand uh, number. So let's say 3001, like that. It really doesn't matter. You can use any number you want as long as it's not um, a number which is in use already. So we'll just go with 3001, and we can go ahead and run this. 
So let's go to our terminal and run that. Um, if you've closed the terminal down, you can go to view and then terminal right here, or you can open it from the CMD right here and then CD into the project. It's entirely up to you, but I'll use the built-in terminal and I'll just say node and then my app .js, just like we did before. I'll run that and you can see that the uh, carrot is still there. So it's still running this. And that's because we've said listen on this server and it's created a server and it's now listening. So this is just continuously running. And if you go to a web browser now, okay, and then if you go to local host and then colon 3001, you won't see anything. But if I go back to here, you'll see uh, joined because this right here has joined the server. And when you join the server, every time someone joins it, it does this code in here. Okay. So again, if I refresh this, or rather if I just go to that uh, site again, localhost 3001, you'll see another one joined, okay? So it does this every single time someone joins this server. So when you create a server and you say listen, it literally starts listening for anyone to join. And when someone joins, it will run this code. Obviously, you're going to do some more complicated things than just uh, log joined. But you get the idea of how this is just listening for you. So this right here is your very first Node.js server. Now, one last thing real quick. Um, rather than using var for these two, we should probably use uh, const instead like this. Now, const in JavaScript, so I'm changing both of those. So const just means that this uh, variable you've created should not change. So if you try and change the value of these two, because they've been declared with const, you'll see an error. This is a good habit to get into when you know a variable's value should never be changed um, because this prevents you from changing it later on accidentally. You can quite easily include some code in your file which will change this without you knowing. Maybe you're using, maybe some other variable later on in the code has the same name uh, and it could change without you knowing and it could be a quite a difficult problem to uh, fix. So const just tells the code that this value should never change. If anyone tries to change it, let me know with an error. So yeah, that's it. You've created your very first Node.js server. Um, I know some of that is complicated and it probably didn't make much sense to you at this point, but uh, don't worry about it. It will make a lot more sense as we go. Just bear with me. But as always, any questions, just let me know.